So this year was my first Gamescom visit ever, and I had a blast. And even though I had just two days to spare there, I saw a lot of cool games and talked to a lot of cool people. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to look at everything. Sorry, Death Stranding, you will remain a mystery for a little while longer. Nevertheless, I managed to get my hands on some games, test them, or at least sit in an exclusive presentation, and what I came up with are 14 games you should be hyped for. Just a heads up, of course there are some obvious choices on the list, but I also took the liberty to wander off the beaten path, towards the indie and the non-video game section. You might be surprised by my choices, but this is my list, so it's my rules. Here we go. The first game I want to talk about is Han Showdown. I've been playing this game for a year now, ever since it was in its beta stage, and I am happy to say that the game is finally ready for the market. By the time this video comes out, it will be released on Steam, and I can recommend it without hesitation. Hunt Showdown is a first-person multiplayer shooter. You take on the role of a cursed hunter who is out in the bayou of Louisiana in 1893 to hunt otherworldly beings. There are 12 players on the map, and everybody moves in to take down one specific monster. Once the monster has been dealt with, it leaves a bounty for you to pick up, but as soon as you do that, you will be seen by the rest of the players which want the bounty for themselves. Stealth your way to victory or go guns blazing. The choice is yours as long as you can make it out alive. The game impresses with mechanics like permadeath, old-timey weapons real cowboys used during their time, and the ability to customize your hunter before the match even starts. Also, I want to use this opportunity to say thank you to Crytek for letting me introduce new players to Hunt Showdown during their presentation. Some of the new players got genuinely scared when they were face to face with the monsters. It was awesome to see. Awesome is by the way the best word to describe the team behind the game. Everybody is nice with an outgoing personality and yet very professional and passionate. The second game is of course the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is an RPG that certainly doesn't need any more introduction. The line in front of the game was massive, but it was worth it. They threw you right into the combat and I am amazed by Square Enix's ability to update the combat system, but still stay true to their turn-based roots. The original featured turn-based combat. Your character could only act when the ATB meter at the bottom of the screen was filled up. If your character was fast, then it would fill up faster than your enemy's ATB bar, which gave you the advantage. The remake still didn't get rid of the ATB system, but it was reworked to make combat more action-oriented. You can always attack and dodge, but special actions can still only be executed when the ATB meter is full. For example, using an item or casting magic still needs a full ATB bar. The limit break system also returned, and it works as you expect it to work. You get hit or hit something, your limit break bar fills up. Once it's full, your character will unleash a powerful special attack. Aside from the combat, I can say that the cutscenes and animations are top notch. This Final Fantasy remake will be bought as soon as it gets released. Moving on, Square Enix also presented a chocobo board game. I know it's not a video game, but this is my list and I still think it deserves some attention. It's called Chocobo Party Up, and the goal is to gather as many chocobos as possible in your nest and bully every other player out of their chocobos with clever positioning on the board and special cards you can gather during the course of the game. During our test play we noticed that the rules are simple, but give way to a lot of tactical strategies you can use to amass your own herd of chocobos. The art style is sweet and cute, like a unicorn made out of sugar. The production value of the game seems to be high too, and even though the target audience might not be men and women in their 30s, it was still a lot of fun. Of course, Square Enix presented their new add-on for Final Fantasy XIV, which is a long-lasting MMORPG, but uh, I don't like it that much so I didn't look at it. Instead, I looked a bit more into the Final Fantasy trading card game, which has already been out for about two years. In my opinion, I think this game might be a worthy alternative to Magic the Gathering, since it gets rid of the age-old problem of, look, I didn't draw any mana, now I'm dead. But explaining all the mechanics is best done in a separate video. Next up, 2K Games and Borderlands. The booth was massive, and they dubbed the whole thing the Church of the Vault. Cosplayers were there to promote the game, and they even had a strong stage presence outside of their real presentation. The Borderlands series is yet again another FPS franchise with an emphasis on fun, over-the-top humor and millions and millions of guns that are randomly generated. Oh, and Borderlands 2 featured one of the best villains in video game history, period. 
So naturally, expectations for the sequel are high, and I'm sorry, but the presentation itself left me with more questions than answers. It showed off new and old features the game will have. For example, every character will have three action skills instead of one. The game will include jumping between different planets, which I assume will make the game extremely big. There are also new villains and enemies in the game, but that's a given. Apart from that, I can't really tell if the Calypso twins will be as memorable as Handsome Jack. But to be honest, these are quite big shoes to fill, so I might give it a break there. The gunplay and graphics so far? Awesome and rewarding. But the most anticipated game by far was Cyberpunk 2077. Unlike 2K, who were total show-offs, CDPR threw no party, they had no outside screens, it was just the booth and a lot of mystery surrounding it. And a line where you had to wait for 6 hours upwards if you wanted to see the presentation. The presentation of this long-awaited RPG featured two distinct ways to play the game. The first one was the typical brute. Just smash through everything that moves, and the second one was a full-on hacker who was even able to manipulate the brains of your opponents. Just like with Borderlands, I'm afraid I can't tell you much about the story except for the fact that Keanu Reeves, aka Johnny Silverhand, lives inside your brain. And don't we all want a bit of Keanu inside of us these days? I am extremely excited because of the gameplay mechanics and the choices, because they're incredibly detailed. But other than that, very mysterious overall. But since CDPR is the shining beacon of good game design right now, I do believe that Cyberpunk will deliver. And now for something completely different. Doom Eternal. As always, I wasn't allowed to just point my camera at the screen, but I got to play a bit of the new Doom and what can I say? It's Doom with a more colorful HUD. Also, the Doom Slayer is way more agile now. There will be some jump and boost through air sections in the game. And even though the game is not keen on cutscenes because it would just interrupt the flow of demon slaying, it seems like there will be some in the game, probably to show off how cool the Slayer will look in different skins. But I can say this much, Doom Eternal will not be a letdown. Not at all. Next, I checked out Ubisoft and their new game, Watch Dogs Legions. Basically, you are putting together a team of individuals to take down a corrupt London government and you can recruit pretty much everybody you see on the street. Anybody can become your friend and everybody comes equipped with some perks only that character has. For example, you can play as an old man who does increased weapon damage but may die anytime. It's an extremely ambitious project, I am hyped and I just hope Ubisoft learn from their mistakes and won't pull another Watch Dogs 1 on us. One more game that has gone under the radar for a long time but finally showed up at Gamescom is Code Vein. From the looks of it, I would go so far as to call it the Dark Souls anime. You play as a revenant, which is just another word for vampire and you need to fight and search for blood in a post-apocalyptic world. The mechanics are unmistakably Dark Souls-ish, meaning you will get punished for every little mistake you do, but there's also a little bit of Neo and Sekiro here. And of course, there are a lot of customization options you can choose from to build your character as you see fit. But that's just even more like Dark Souls. Anyway, I will buy that one since I am a sucker for all that is hard. Now if you're asking, hey, where are the Nintendo games? Well, don't worry, here they are. Trials of Mana is a remake of Seiken Setsu 3, which is an awesome Japanese RPG that was released for the Super Nintendo back in the 90s and sadly never got ported over to the western market. The original featured six different characters, three storylines depending on which characters you put together as a team, and of course, multiplayer. All these features, except for the multiplayer, which is inconclusive, are back, along with an all new 3D environment to explore and an updated combat system for fast paced combat. I was able to play the demo here too and I really like what they did. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to hear any voice acting and if it's just as bad as in the Secret of Mana remake, but let's just hope for the best. The next Nintendo game that made big waves is none other than Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, which is another remake based on the same title. The original is a well-loved classic, which also introduced new ideas to the franchise when it came out. For example, in Link's Awakening, Link was able to put away his sword and instead use two different items at the same time, allowing for new puzzles and creative solutions. I do like the new art style, it's awesome, but in my opinion it's not enough to buy it. You might be swayed by the fact that this title comes packaged with a dungeon building system a la Mario Maker though. Alright, you saw a lot of games from some big developers, but if you know me, then you know this list wouldn't be complete without some indie titles. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is Stygian, a Lovecraftian RPG of horror, loss and madness. You create your 1920s character and delve into a warped version of the town of Arkham. Our world as we know it doesn't exist anymore and got invaded by forces from beyond. The developer promises an intriguing story with multiple endings depending on your choices and degree of madness. The game features a turn-based combat system, although fighting might not be the only option available. Sometimes diplomacy or simply running away might be better. And also the magic system seems to be quite different. Casting magic to fend off monsters always costs something. Some health, some sanity, maybe even something far greater in value. The release date will be the 26th of September and I would like you to at least look at it, even though it has a pretty weird art style. One more indie game that deserves some attention is Never Dark. In this real-time strategy game, you are tasked with the mission to revitalize the human civilization after a worldwide blackout plunged the world into chaos. You take control of an abandoned part of a city and try to expand your territory step by step. Be it through diplomacy, fighting or extortion, the choice is yours. The cities you try to reconquer take the shape of real cities like New York, Paris and Tokyo. If you happen to live there, you might recognize some of the streets and buildings. It reminds me a lot of some other games I played recently, namely This War of Mine and Frostpunk, which were awesome in their own right and I hope to feel the same spark here. Unfortunately, there was no playable demo and just a 10 minute presentation video, but I will gladly give this game a shot. Last but not least, I took a look at Last Moon. Like Stygian, it's an RPG, but it takes its inspiration not from the horror genre, but from the classic RPG of the 90s. The story might even hail straight out of that time. An evil wizard cursed the moon and because of that, monsters roam the world now. Your job, therefore, is to lift the curse in order to restore peace and freedom in the world. Planned features for the game include a day and night cycle, along with the four seasons, lovely characters along with an equally lovely art style and a mysterious moon spirit that will give the main character the ability to hear the thoughts of every living being. Not even a definitive release date is announced yet. The game will be released in 2020 however and since I like the old classic games a lot, I'll give this a try too. Alright ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and of course, I am looking forward to share more infos and videos with you. See ya!